She continued on her way to English, but all she could think about was that she just had a conversation, a real human conversation, with Mason Blair. Sarah sat down next to Abby in class. Mason Blair just talked to me, Sarah whispered. Like, talk to me, talk to me. I'm not surprised, Abby whispered back. Something about you lately. What do you mean? Abby crinkled her forehead the way she did when she was thinking hard. I don't know. I can't exactly put it into words. It's like you're glowing from the inside out. Sarah smiled. Yeah, that is what it's like. But really, it was the changes on the outside that were making her glow inside. In the evening, after Eleanor did her wake-up movements, Sarah threw her arms around her. It felt strange to hug something so cold and hard. And when Eleanor's arms encircled Sarah, she felt a flicker of what could have been fear. But she quickly pushed the feeling away. There was nothing to be afraid of. Eleanor was a friend. Eleanor, Sarah said, drawing back from the hug. I couldn't be happier with my new body. It's perfect. Thank you so much. I'm glad. Eleanor said. All I want is for you to be happy, Sarah. Well, I'm loads happier than I was before I found you, Sarah said. Today, it was like I could feel all these people seeing me, and they liked what they saw. The guy I've had a crush on for months even noticed me and talked to me. That's wonderful, Eleanor said. I'm glad I've been able to make all your wishes come true, Sarah. A dark cloud suddenly passed over the brightness of Sarah's mood. Well, she said, not all of them. She reached up and touched her potatoey nose. Really? Eleanor sounded surprised. What is it that you still wish, Sarah? Sarah took a deep breath. I love my new body, she said. I really do, but I'm kind of what some guys call pretty from afar, but far from pretty. Eleanor cocked her head again. Pretty from afar? I don't understand, Sarah. Well, you know... Guys will say she looks great from far away, but don't get too close to her face. Oh, far from pretty, Eleanor said. I understand now. She laughed, a metallic tinkling. It's very amusing. It's not as someone is using it to describe you, Sarah said. I suppose it isn't, Eleanor said. She reached up and touched Sarah's cheek. Sarah, do you really want me to change all this? Do you really want a new face? I do. Sarah said. I want a tiny nose and full lips and high cheekbones. I want long, dark eyelashes and nice eyebrows. I don't want to look like Mrs. Mix and Match anymore. Eleanor laughed her tinkly laugh again. I can do this for you, Sarah, but you have to understand. It's a big change. You can look in the mirror and see longer legs or a curvier figure, and they've just looked like you've grown. Faster than expected, maybe, but still. Growth is normal for a child. It is something you know will happen. All your life, though, you've looked in the mirror, seen your face, and said, That's me. It is true that your face changes some as you grow, but it is still recognizable as you. To see a totally different face as your reflection can be quite a shock. It's a shock I want, Sarah said. I hate my face the way it is. Very well, Sarah, Eleanor said, looking into her eyes. As long as you're sure. After she ate dinner with her mom and did her homework, she showered and got ready for Eleanor to put her to sleep one more time. But as she snuggled under the covers, a disturbing thought occurred to her. Eleanor? Yes, Sarah? She was already standing beside Sarah's bed. What will my mom think if I sit down to eat breakfast the next morning and I have a totally different face? Eleanor sat down on the bed. It is a good question, Sarah. But she won't notice, not really. She may think you look especially rested or well, but she won't notice that your plain face has been replaced by a beautiful one. Mothers always think their children are beautiful, so when your mother looks at you, she has always seen great beauty. Oh, okay, Sarah said, feeling relaxed again. No wonder her mother didn't understand her problems. She thought her daughter was already beautiful. I'm ready then. Eleanor touched Sarah's heart pendant. And do you remember? That I always have to wear and can never ever take it off. Yes, I remember. Good. Eleanor stroked Sarah's hair and sang one more time. Go to sleep, go to sleep, go to sleep, my sweet Sarah. When you wake, when you wake, all your dreams will come true. Just like before, Sarah felt the changes before she saw them. 
As soon as she woke, she reached up and touched her nose. She felt not a potato-like bulb, but a pert-like point. She ran her hands over the sides of her face and felt clearly defined cheekbones. She touched her lips and found them plumper than before. She hopped out of bed to take a look. It was amazing. The person looking back at Sarah was a totally different person than before. Eleanor was right. It was shocking, but it was a good kind of shock. Everything she had hated about her appearance was gone and had been replaced by absolute perfection. Her eyes were wide and a deeper blue, and fringed with long, sooty eyelashes. Her eyebrows were delicate arches. Her nose was tiny and perfectly straight, and her lips were a pink Cupid's bow. Her hair, while still brown, was fuller and shinier, and fell into pretty soft waves. She looked at herself up and down. She smiled at herself with her straight white teeth. Beautiful. She was the total package.